Vaan. Tervetuloa kaikille sunnuntai-luennolle. Ja meillä on tänään Kanupria Yhdysvalloista, New Yorkin läheltä retriittikeskuksesta. Ja uh, warm welcome Kanupria. Hello, you can hear well? Yes, hello. Yes, hello. Ja just a few words in Finnish. Eli tämän luennon käännös löytyy tuolta, ähm, kun klikkaatte, klikkaatte tuolta interpretation, tuota maapallon kuvaa, ja siinä näkyykin kuva. Ja jos olette puhelimella, niin klikatkaa kolmea pistettä ja sieltä ohjataan. Ja valitkaa sieltä suomen kieli finish niin Ella kääntää tänään tämän luennon. Ja tämä on tätä ihanaa Zoomin aikaa, että käännöskin onnistuu näin helposti ja koko tähän luentoon voi ihanasti osallistua sieltä kotisohvalta. So warm welcome for everyone and uh, today we have an interesting topic how to control your mood swings and we everybody We all know how draining mood swings can be, feeling sometimes up and then feeling down and back and forth. So I'm sure we all want to know more secrets, how to prevent mood swings or how maybe to recover from, uh, from a day that is full of mood swings. And Kanupriya is, yes, from United States, originally from India. And uh, she is currently in a retreat center called Peace Village. And uh, I have been there some 10 years ago. It is like a paradise, a beautiful mountain area, both in the winter time and also beautiful in the summertime with lots of gardens and flowers. So warm, warm welcome from that beautiful paradise for Kanupriya. And a few words I just uh, tell you about Kanupriya. Mm, um, she writes that, uh, yes, she's an MBA and working as a consultant. And uh, she has been dabbling with various spiritual concepts And with Raj Yoga, she discovered a lifestyle and a way of thinking which helps her to be happy. So, warm welcome, and I hand it over to you, Kanupriya. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope the voice is heard well. It is, yes, it's good to hear, yeah. And the board is uh, seen properly. Board can be that beautiful board can be seen very, very well. Yes. Okay. So thank you, Sister Gite, for the warm introduction. And it's always good to see happy faces from Finnish family. <laughs> uh, and when I got this topic, Uh, I was thinking maybe you know I should take some tips from the Finnish family because I heard that Finland is on the happiness index top happiness top five is that right <laughs> yeah so um, but yes uh, here in Peace Village it is uh, we are you know forgetting the snow and preparing for the spring time right now. And it is very beautiful uh, weather. So just um, conquering mood swings, right? Uh, so I was just actually looking at uh, the definition of uh, moods, moods. Because uh, what is it that it really means? And the dictionary meaning says that a conscious mood is a conscious state of mind or a predominant emotion, right? And there are so many, many different moods that we actually um, 
observe within ourselves or feel within ourselves right these are so many emotions in a day sometimes in an hour sometimes within few minutes we are as if changing our feelings and emotions right so the more frequent they become it's a problem right <laughs> or if they become more intense uh, over a period of time if i'm going on feeling for example uh, sad or heavy or confused for a long time then it is not so good right and mood a uh, swing i mean we are perturbed or we are disturbed by it when they are in the uh, negative zone right the unpleasant feelings the unpleasant emotions um and this is something that i have tried to write down in the bottom of this uh, chart the sketch yeah there are so many i've just listed a, a very few but there can be many 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 more yeah and uh if we were to actually um know how to get to the positive emotions or moods and uh, be constant in that in spite of whatever may be happening uh in our surroundings then we will be conquerors of mood swings and a very beautiful uh, raj yoga technique actually tells us not just how to you know overcome these mood swings for a temporary short period of time of course we may begin like that we may um you know if we really accurately practice um, um whatever raj yoga teaches us then for some time we may be able to get the benefit but actually uh, if we really practice over a long period of time the raj yoga techniques and meditations then we will be able to experience these positive feelings of happiness lightness cheerfulness being carefree always that would become constant so does anybody want to be like that <laughs> i'm sure we all want to be like that right so the mood swings are more concerning the negative emotions and we want to come here yeah so right now also it's not that we don't experience these emotions at all right we do feel happy sometimes we do feel um light and cheerful yeah sometimes but it is for a temporary short period of time and uh, when we look at um uh, why this happens right the causes of mood swings um the one biggest cause is any guesses <laughs> any thoughts or comments yeah um it would be good if we can have uh, i don't know if it's possible uh in the with the translation but uh, yeah you could type uh if possible so the one biggest cause is our uh, dependency on certain things right and that dependency what we say is um dependent on the external world which is actually perishable and changing always yeah so uh, for example uh, my mood may be good if for example i want an ice cream right now everybody likes ice cream or chocolate or whatever right if i i like an ice cream and i get the ice cream then uh there is a feeling of happiness but if i don't get the ice cream then there is a feeling of sadness if somebody else gets the ice cream then <laughs> and i don't get it then there is jealousy and envy and there are so many emotions like this if i i get the ice if i don't get the ice cream and i can blame something or someone for not getting the ice cream then there will be 
some sort of anger if i if i can blame a friend of mine or if i can blame weather something like this some some external thing then there is anger that is another emotion or mood and then there is uh, if if i don't get the ice cream and i can't blame anyone then there is sadness within uh, some kind of uh, depression or feeling low yes so there are so many 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 negative uh, or an unpleasant feelings and emotions which are coming from that dependency on ice cream i feel that the moment i get ice cream i will get happiness and ice cream is just of course a, a very small example but we are forming these kind of attachments to many 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 things in our external surroundings and like we all know already that our external surroundings are as if always changing unpredictable temporary in nature yeah there is nothing on this earth which is permanent so um for example if i just come out of the door it is very much possible here in peace village right now it's nice and uh, nice weather and sunny but if i step out of the door it is possible it starts to snow or rain uh, become very windy right um the friend that i speak with um the friend i feel is very very close to me and since childhood uh from the age of 3 we are very good friends but it is very much possible that tomorrow she feels that she uh does not want to talk to me anymore so life is very unpredictable but we are forming these attachments with things like ice cream with people with objects uh with weather yeah uh things that are unpredictable we are forming attachments and then we are becoming dependent because of those attachments to get our happiness so that is uh the basic premise of why we are having these mood swings right and uh if we were to really see uh what is happening in, in our minds because the mind is a very um crucial player in um how what we are perceiving how what we are experiencing right so uh, because of this uh, understanding the mind and what is really happening in the mind becomes very important and we say uh, in here that so right? the experiencer is this point of light who looks like a star yeah he's having all these experiences and the experiencer in my case is not kanupriya the experiencer we are talking about is that invisible uh, point of light and the experiencer is using the mind is using the body um to have all these experiences in the temporary physical world right uh but we know that uh, this experiencer is actually not belonging to this temporary physical world um the experiencer the point of light who looks like a star is actually uh, belonging to a world beyond this physical world in a world which we call uh, the home of the the experiencer so the home of stars and that world is eternal and immortal so coming to uh, our physical realm right the experiencer is having some experiences based on um various interactions he's having with uh his 
external environment in the physical world that may include things like job, like relationships with other people, uh, with objects, right? Like I'm using this chair right now, using this board right now, using the markers, right? So we are interacting with objects as well. Then there are so many other things and activities that we do uh, in everyday lives. We are going to the gym, maybe we are exercising, we are walking, right? Or we are um, uh, playing something, some sports. And then we are uh, another object very important nowadays. The way we are connected right now is through some gadgets, right? Either through the phone, very important, or the laptop or whatever else, right? So we are interacting with many, many, many things on a daily basis, uh, moment by moment. And we are creating experiences based on our interaction. And what happens in our mind, right? We are trying to understand that how we are creating these experiences. Or when I am saying we, meaning the experience, sir. So we all know that the body is by itself has no experience, right? Because when the experience, uh, the, this point of light who looks like a star, leaves the body, then there is no experience for the body. So that is the time of uh, leaving the body, meaning death, right? We all know that, um, that corpse cannot really experience anything. No pain, no... Our feelings, right? No happiness, nothing. But when the experiencer is in the body, uh, then it is using that body and experiencing things based on what, how he's interacting. And that interaction is actually based on awareness. We will come to awareness in a little while, but let us just understand what is happening in the mind. So there is an experiencer and within the experiencer, all these faculties of the experiencer or this tiny point of light are there. So I've just drawn, drawn this, um, the map of the mind like a stage, okay? If, if we were to call this stage as the front stage. So in a play, there is a front stage, right? And this we can call as the conscious mind. So in the conscious mind, there are, um, in like in any play or stage, there are many, many actors, right? And the actors on this stage of the mind are, does anybody want to say? So don't know if there are, but who are the famous actors in Finland? <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe um, uh, Sherlock Holmes in UK is famous, right? <laughs> so there may be many, many, many actors, right? Uh, on the this stage of the mind. And the stage of the mind, the actors are, I would present it with small i, are thoughts. And with each thought, there is a certain kind of, um, so we will say that thoughts are actors. Right? And with each thought, there is a certain feeling or an emotion or an attitude that is associated with that particular thought. So for example, in the this example of an ice cream, yeah, the moment I get an ice cream, there is a feeling of happiness. But if I don't get, then there is feeling of sadness. So for every 
thought there is a certain feeling or emotion attitude i will be looking forward to have ice cream when i have that thought so there are many 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 thoughts currently in this front stage of the mind and these thoughts are currently all based on the physical um objects people and um uh, things right whether all these kinds of um thoughts are there and uh, each of this small i or thought um is based on what we call a uh, false identity the false identity is um nothing but when the experience of this tiny point of light actually uh forgets that he is the experiencer and he try he actually feels that he someone else so just to give an example when we are using this chair right so while using this chair when i am sitting on the chair and using the chair i know that this is the chair and uh this body is different from the chair the object chair so the distinction is very very clear but if you know uh if there is a time where i start to feel that the chair i like very much and i love this chair and i form some kind of attachment to this chair not just attachment but if there was a time where i start to feel that the chair is me and that is something that we call a false identification and you know it it sounds very weird and absurd but that is exactly what has happened with with the experiencer with all of us so uh, how do i know that this this chair is something that i have formed of identification with so it's not just attachment right um i want the chair and i um like the chair that attachment is fine but when i start to feel that this is who i am the chair is who i am is when all the confusion starts and when uh when somebody for example um a friend of mine just visits me and says that oh this chair is uh, so ugly then i feel very offended and i start to take it extremely personally and the moment i i start to take the offense and criticism personally then there is definitely a false identity that i have formed so in this simple example the chair is very easy to you know for us to see that okay there are two different things uh the chair is different the body is different and you know because both can be seen with this these eyes it is it is very easy for us to make the distinction that two are different and uh maybe difficult to form that false identity but in the case of the experiencer this this tiny being of light who looks like a star he like we said is invisible cannot be seen with the eyes but he is operating the whole body in my case kanupriya's body and the role that kanupriya is playing is being played actually by the experiencer and because it cannot be seen with the eyes we all have forgotten that that is the case so that he is the one who's operating and there is a total confusion there is this kind of false identity that we have started to think of ourselves as in my case kanupriya and that is why um this raj yoga uh tells us this um or answers this very basic question um 
of who am I? So Raj Yoga is telling us, spiritual wisdom is telling us that the real I, the true I, is this tiny point of light who's the experiencer, not Kanupriya. And the, the experience that we are all having uh, currently are based on this false identification of Kanupriya. So in the example where we were seeing in our mind, um, Kanupriya wants ice cream, <laughs> right? And uh, for, the, um, for the attachment that Kanupriya has formed with the ice cream and some kind of dependency, and she thinks that the ice cream can give her some happiness is actually very based on the false identity that it is the body, right? Or Kanupriya who wants the ice cream and can give the happiness. Now on the experiencer who's invisible uh, actually doesn't need anything from the physical world, right? He belongs to this uh, subtle region. He's eternal. He's immortal, doesn't, uh, he exists forever, doesn't need anything ever. And especially not an ice cream, doesn't need even air <laughs> to breathe, right? Because it is the, for keeping the body alive that air is needed. But uh, the immortal being is always living, right? So based on all these false identities, we took an example of ice cream, but it could be just any person, right? If my friend does something for me, I'm happy. If uh, she doesn't do, then I'm not happy. I'm, I go into that kind of, uh, that kind of low feeling and mood swings and our mood sometimes becomes off also, right? <laughs> so, um, so all these thoughts currently that I've represented in the blue eye actually are based on false identities currently. And we also use the word ego for this false identity. Both mean this exactly the same. Ego is nothing but false identities. So there are many, many, many thoughts which we are creating based on these false identities. And the experiencer is experiencing these emotions based on these external uh, uh, thoughts, based on these external things, uh, and the basis of which is the false identities and ego. Now, Raj Yoga is also telling us that that there are, um, you know, thoughts of true identity also um, in, in our minds, but they are extremely small right now. In one corner, they are hidden. So that is the, that is the case of the front stage of the mind. And like in any actor, in any play or movie uh, or uh, a theater kind of setting where there is a stage, Every actor wants to be on the front stage, isn't it? Everybody wants to be known. Uh, unless they come on the front stage, nobody knows them. So that is what is happening currently with all these false identities. They are fighting with each other to come on the front stage because they want that importance. So one of the false identities, uh, the thought may be about ice cream, the other thought may be about chocolate, the third thought may be about job, the fourth thought may be about some relationship. So there are so many, many, many um, um, thoughts that are wanting to gain importance and wanting to be seen in the, on the front stage uh, so that everybody starts to recognize them. So when there is this kind of fight going on, then 
what would be the result in the mind? The result in the mind would nothing but uh, would be nothing but chaos and confusion. We understand, right? And then for each of you can imagine if the thoughts are already causing confusion and um, chaos in the mind. Now with each thought, we said that there is a feeling and emotion attitude that is related to it. And each, each of this thought, you know, uh, if, it, if it, it were to be fulfilled, whatever um, that thought was about, there are two, two aspects, two emotions that can come, right? <laughs> it can either give you happiness or it can take you towards an unpleasant feeling. It may be whatever, anger or jealousy or depression, feeling low, feeling sad, anything, right? So each of these thoughts has many, many emotions and feelings attached to it based on what is happening with that thought. So you can imagine the kind of chaos in the mind and also our emotions. And that is where we start to um, feel these, this thing about swinging in the mood. Yeah. So at one moment, we are, we are, we are feeling um, maybe even happy, right? Uh, because we got the ice cream, but we didn't get, um, for example, the promotion in the job hmm? at that very moment then. There is two different uh, emotions that are already come. So one example, you know, um, it, it, somebody, for example, got uh, um, a new car, very luxurious new car. Uh, in, in America, Tesla is the newest uh, car um, and very high end and everything, right? So... This person, a very rich person, got this car, Tesla car. And uh, he has a chauffeur, a driver who's driving him. He's sitting at the back of the car enjoying his new Tesla car with all new good, you know, latest features and amenities. The seat uh, can recline and, you know, he has a nice room and everything. He's nice and happy because he got the car. He's been wanting to get the car. Now, um, uh, this person is, uh, you know, in the, in the uh, capital markets, like a stockbroker uh, in the finance field. And he gets a phone call at that moment uh, while he's sitting in the car um, that the stock market has crashed and all his investments have, you know, uh, he's incurring a lot of losses. So, that very moment, how will he feel? Just now, at this second, he was feeling very happy about his new car. But in the same new car, now, because of the phone call he got, he is starting to feel anxious because he's worried now what will happen to all his investments and, uh, um, you know, how will he deal with um, the stock market crash? And then um, just this is hypothetical example, okay? It is possible that, um, um, you know, after some time he may, you know, while he's now he's trying to, you know, solve this issue about his stock market and what whatever he has to do. But it is possible that he gets another call from a relative saying that, you know, somebody close to him has passed away or left the body. Then there is a, third kind of emotion that is um, not third but many more emotions which are coming right um, so uh, meaning to say that you know in at one point of time there are so many things happening to all of us yeah these are uh, what I shared as very extreme examples and hypothetical but even on a daily basis second by second we are you know dealing with this unpredictability and creating so many thoughts and you know there are so many emotions and feelings that we are feeling and that is causing like the oscillation like in the pendulum which i tried to show in my <laughs> earlier graph 
so um so this is what is happening in the front stage and in the front uh, while there is a front stage there is you know in every play or every theater there is also a backstage now backstage um, in the spiritual context in this model that we are uh, depicting here is the subconscious mind so that is like the backstage so uh, of course you know there are uh, many thoughts on the front stage but there are many more thoughts in the backstage as well right not everybody gets a chance to um really come on the front stage but uh you know and there are many uh if i would say you know, you know good actors come on the, uh, or uh, actors some actors come on the front stage but there are in this uh, in the in the backstage in the subconscious mind there are many 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 more and each of these actors actually wants to come on the front stage and many of these actors become bullies when they come on the front stage they really dominate the the whole mind and when we looked in the beginning we looked at the definition of mood right so that definition of mood said that it is a conscious state of mind or predominant emotion yeah because we are really feeling that emotion dominantly it's because one of the thoughts of a bully actor is dominating and in in the case of ice cream if i'm not getting the ice cream then um then i'm feeling some kind of unpleasant emotion uh of course we spoke about the different kinds of unpleasant emotions it could be anger it could be envy it could be depression whatever right so each of these actors in the backstage actually want to come on the front stage but when they come on the front stage they are sometimes becoming bully and how is that happening it is happening because we are acting on the thought so in the case of ice cream the more uh, i have a thought that i want ice cream and i actually go and get ice cream that means i have acted on that thought the more that thought becomes stronger it becomes stronger on in the front stage on the front stage yeah as well as it becomes stronger in the backstage as well in the subconscious mind as well and the next time now um you know um maybe earlier i was uh, you know whenever it was very hot day then i would feel like having an ice cream i would have a thought that i want an ice cream but now that i have acted on this thought of having an ice cream and i got the ice cream it has become stronger so now next time it is very much possible that i it is a cold day not a hot day but i happen to see a picture of ice cream somewhere and just by looking at the picture of the ice cream in a magazine or on on the gadgets that we are actually um using then it is possible that you know just by looking at it i feel like having the ice cream so again if i act on that that thought then again this this um this actor will become even bigger bully and also in our subconscious mind the impression of that thought will become even bigger so the more we act in the on the thought especially on the thoughts that are based on false identities they are actually becoming uh, more and more stronger gaining more strength 
in the front stage as well as backstage now in the subconscious mind or the backstage is where the impressions are formed in the mind so we are not consciously aware about things but you know uh, they are still there you know sometimes we uh, with the feelings and emotions we we feel that you know why did this happen or you know um, that i was not thinking like this but i am still feeling like this um it is because something has been created in the subconscious mind and it is there in the subconscious mind an impression has been created yeah so while on in the on the conscious mind side there are actors um and thoughts in the subconscious mind is where impressions are formed so one needs to be very careful of you know subconscious mind right because sometimes these uh, moods are uh, as if suppressed in the subconscious mind it is in the in the impression somewhere and um you know sometimes even looking at strangers or people you don't know too well right you start to feel not not very nice you know maybe feelings of um jealousy competition these kind of feelings may come up just examples right it is because you know even if you don't know then then how can you know you can <laughs> but there is some kind of trigger in the subconscious mind or impression that is there already now in the subconscious mind the spiritual wisdom is telling us that this is where lot of um spiritual thoughts or the true identity thoughts are also there and uh, the more we nurture that true identity thought the more they will become stronger and become um uh, occupy our front stage as well so the same mechanism of the front stage of the acting on that thought so meditation really helps here and uh, nourishing that uh, that uh, true awareness state the identity state the more we nourish that and come in that awareness we will be able to um be um the feelings uh, associated with that true awareness state is where we will start to feel happy constantly and light and carefree right okay so this is all good but what is you know what is really deciding which actor comes on the front stage and which does not come in the front stage so there is a third um faculty in this whole um model and that is the like in a play there is a director right so there is a director for our mind as well and that is what we call the intellect so just like in a play how the director directs or tells which actor uh, he's the one who decides which actor should come on the front stage which should not come in the front stage so as per the script of the play he will say okay now is the time for um this actor to come not then the next right but right now the the exp what our uh, all our situation is that in the intellect is very weak and just like in any play if nobody listens to the director if the actors don't listen to the director there will be total chaos right every actor like we said wants to be in the front stage and want to be there for as long as possible hmm? similarly if we are having a weak intellect then there is chaos because intellect is not able to decide which actor should come for how long they should stay uh in the front stage and so on and so forth so um so empowering the intellect with coming into this um true awareness state and minute by minute every minute is an opportunity for us to come in th the true awareness of who we really are of the true experiencer the more we come into the awareness of um the experiencer the true i 
the more we will be able to actually have all those pleasant feelings. So hope this is clear. And just to summarize before we move on to the questions. We discussed about how to be happy always. Yeah. So conquering mood swings just means that we want to be in a state where we are happy not for a short period of time, but always. Whether we get the ice cream or don't get the ice cream, we should be able to be in a state of happiness. And happiness is uh, just one pleasant emotion, but it could be lightness or um, uh, not getting disturbed, right? Um, and uh, being carefree is another very beautiful feeling. Being light is another very beautiful, pleasant feeling that we all want to be in. So um, not to be disturbed or perturbed, uh, to be in a state where we are equanimous, uh, always happy. That is where we want to be. So few things uh, which I did mention, but it's good to list it out. So we were talking about coming in the right awareness. So awareness is nothing but um, yeah, we are coming into that true identity state. And that true identity state, Raj Yuga gives a very clear and um, easy definition that we are these points of light. And these points of light are um, invisible, of course, not belonging to the physical world, they are coming to the physical world for a short period of time. And uh, just uh, they will, they will play their role, they will play their, uh, the character, and then they will exit. So the more we come into that awareness, the more we will be connected to our reality, the reality of who we really are, where we belong, we belong to that eternal uh, dimension called the home of these points of light, the experiencer. And the more we connect with that, we start to feel secure. Uh, because now we are aware that the experiencer belongs to a subtle world, which is eternal. He actually needs nothing from the physical world. And uh, when, he, when he starts to feel as if he needs nothing, he sees that it is so silly of him to think that he can own something. There is actually no attraction for him to uh, form any attachment in the physical world. There are feelings of fullness always because of the security. So um, there is absolutely nothing that he really needs. He has everything. Actually, his original innate nature is that of peace and um, happiness and joy. Um, there is a very high feeling of uh, being in bliss always. And this, he knows that this is his real world. He can see very clearly when he is in this true awareness state, he can see very clearly the contrast between the physical uh, and having the ice cream, not having the ice cream as just a part of that physical thing. The role that that Kanupriya in my case is wanting my cream and not getting or whatever. Right? It is very, very clear to him that is separate. He's independent of from this whole physical world and he's full, needs nothing, owns nothing from the physical world. And the moment we start to, um, you know, come into this true awareness state, we are even though, you know, there are many, so many things happening around us. And sometimes we really do need to give attention to things. Yeah, we are all doing things all the time. 
but we should be the moment we catch ourselves going into this false identity state and thinking like that the moment we catch ourselves going into unpleasant feelings then we should be able to apply a dot and this is where that one minute practice of raj yoga meditation come into full awareness with full concentration apply a dot to all the waste thoughts that are coming into your mind and uh, change change and come into that true awareness state so if we are able to do this then this is the result of that there will be no questions no waste thoughts no attraction towards anything in the physical and we are not really taking anything in fact we feel so full and so secure that we feel like giving always to others and we can do that when we are happy and when we are really feeling full light not being burdened by anything so hope that was clear maybe um if there are any questions then we could take that now mm -hmm. or yeah thank you kanupriya and uh, i will also encourage others to have questions uh what the kysymys suomen kielellä ja me käännetään joko chattiin and tekninen tuki kertoo voiko myös kysyä ihan livenä niin uh, so but um, I also hope that there's some time for meditation because in your <clears throat> lecture came very clear that uh, this is about recognizing what kind of thoughts we have and it came very clear so thank you very much in this lecture but also what are the real uh, soul conscious thoughts what are the real thoughts we want to have in our front stage and backstage and what we want to get more and have more powerfully in our mind so it would be nice to have a meditation on it just uh, if there is any question now is a good time I have one question and that would be if uh, there's a day and it's really like uh, mind is not stable at all and it's a bit chaotic do you have any any advice what to do can we like switch the day from horrible to wonderful or is there any like magic we can do in a day like that um from personal experience we'll speak that uh, that we start with when things are good for us when the going is good for us then we practice this uh what i was mentioning this one minute kind of meditation um and we uh try to see what is the real um what is the re what is the real self feel like and with full concentration so even if when if we build this practice and this is where we were saying that the intellect is weak right now but we can make it stronger um and uh, make it more powerful so that the spiritual thoughts can come the elevated thoughts with elevated feelings and pleasant feelings can dominate our mind so on a bad day uh, yes we do try to shift uh, if possible uh, by coming into the awareness but we have to do our homework in advance yeah not wait for the bad day to um, really 
push us into meditation, <laughs> but to uh, do our homework in advance when things are good, build that practice of one minute meditations or longer meditations also if you're able to do. Um, but that is the way to make the intellect stronger. So on a day where, you know, so many things are happening and uh, I'm having a bad day, then that awareness of um, the true I will automatically come. And when we get into the awareness of the true I, then we will start to feel at least lighter. We will have to deal with the situations we are dealing with on a bad day anyways, but we will be able to be more stable, equanimous, and respond to all those situations in a much clearer way. Hope that yeah. works. A lovely answer to highlight that. It is like army, um, physical army will also practice before the battle and not when the battle is going, what should we do with the, all our guns or whatever. This is maybe not a very peaceful example, but anyway, we know what it means. Here is another question. How do I get rid of a powerful feeling when it's on my mind and I cannot get rid of some strong emotion? So uh, if the emotion is very strong, uh, right? Uh, because we have already in that case, you know, emo when with strong emotions, the thing is, or with most un unpleasant emotions, what happens is, you know, we may be understanding what I just said also, and, you know, we are grasping it and everything. But when the situation comes or something happens, then as if um, that understanding what we just had is overruled, you know, logic is overruled, uh, rationality is overruled the thoughts we want to have are actually overruled. That's the bully bully consciousness that we are having, that uh, the bully actor is taking over mm -hmm. because we are so used to having that kind of emotion. So at that point of time, um, you know, not to fight it too much. Of course, the homework needs to be done, like I said in my earlier, but... Uh, when when we are seeing that the emotion is really overpowering, then, um, you know, sometimes just changing our surroundings or for me, you know, even writing it down um, may temporarily, you know, that is not the permanent, permanent solution, but it may temporarily um, alleviate. It will make us feel lighter or if we can just for some time um, distract our mind to, to uh, go for a walk maybe, or just so that we come into a state hmm, where we are able to really see this big picture that I, and really see our mind, what is really happening. Hmm. If we are able to sit down and take that one minute um, listen to some meditation commentary because we are not able to sit on our own in silence in such cases mostly. So listen to a commentary. So these are the three or four things that I usually do. One is try to write it down or go for a walk if possible or listen to some meditation commentary. At least to come to a stage where I'm a little bit more calm and then take it from there. I don't know, Mr. Gita, if you want to add anything to it. <laughs> I think it's very good. You know, you have to somehow change the atmosphere and, and at least not to be stuck in that situation. So I thought it was very practical. Also writing down. Mm, that's uh, quite skillful if, if you can do that. But that's a good tip. But um, this is one hour, but I'm sure we can go some minutes over. It would be nice to have a moment of meditation with these ideas. So, and after that, we will tell future program, but uh, if we would have a, a meditation for five, 10 minutes. Thank you.
So just sit back and choose a alert position. And alert but relaxed. Just take a moment to free the body from all tensions. And in a moment, become aware of that tiny point of light, the experiencer, the one who's experiencing There may be thoughts in the mind about the surroundings in the room that we are sitting in, about what is being spoken, about things that happened since the morning, yesterday, about the to-do list that I still need to do the weekend jobs. We just tell the mind very gently that we'll come to these thoughts later. And we pay attention with full concentration to the experiencer who looks like a star. And with the mind we travel to a world that is beyond this physical world. The home of the star. And we see that home in gentle red light. This is a world of stillness. A world that is changeless, endless. The star experiences absolute security from this eternal world because he knows he's immortal. This is the world that is silent and full of light and clarity. This invisible star can experience fullness where he's not attracted by anything from the physical world. He's full of 
all attainments. He feels peace, contented. And in this awareness of the true self, it is very easy for this tiny star to apply a dot and see the whole physical world as a dot. He knows that his reality is very big and beautiful. He knows that he is beyond harm. He exists forever. He can be always happy in spite of whatever may be happening in the physical realm. And as we approach the physical world, we stay connected to the experiencer and the original experience of the home. We remind ourselves that we have the option to be in the right awareness, the awareness of the true self. Thank you. So, thank you, Kanupriya. And uh, it was lovely to have you tonight in Finland. You can tell your friends that you visited Finland today. And uh, also, it is so wonderful have to, to have this Zoom world that this is possible. Um, I guess you've never been in Finland physically. Uh, yes, I also feel very, very happy and thank you for the invitation. Uh, don't know if uh, we'll ever get an opportunity to visit Finland, but uh, yes, I can definitely tell the friends <laughs> the yeah. diet. So thank you. Uh, hopefully.